Hey, Cinema Aficionados, Dan Patton, Screen Magazine, thanks for checking in. We have a wonderful guest for you today. But first, before I introduce him, I have to tell you a little bit about a creature named Chucky Chicken. Chucky Chicken is the main character in an animated series built on the premise that animals have careers, celebrate holidays, and love hamburgers. He's a friendly kind of guy who would fit right into a vintage Warner Brothers or Disney cartoon. Started in 2008 as a sketch in a notebook, now he's part of a show that's got 35,000 plus YouTube views put together by people associated with some of the biggest studios in the country. Hiya, folks. Cut. Oh, what? It's perfect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. That was a good one, guys. Today, we're sitting down with the creator of Chucky Chicken, a man who I believe also writes and co-writes most of the episodes, as well as directs and co-directs them. And I think he is the voice of Chucky Chicken. And he's joining us from the Animation Center of the Universe, Davenport, Illinois, Mr. Michael Cook. Michael, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Hi, folks, and uh, thank you for having me, Dan. This is really, uh, really swell. <laughs> this is this is super cool. I really like Chucky Chicken. I watched several of the episodes. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> when people ask what what uh, what kind of entertainment, what genre, what is Chucky Chicken delivering to the audience? Uh, good old fashioned family entertainment. You know, uh, we're very much inspired, like you said, by the Disney and the Warner Brothers. Uh, cartoons and uh, uh, that whole era from the 30s all the way to the 90s, uh, I think is kind of what we're trying to bring back. Something that uh, people can escape. You know, we had a, a, a great show for many, many years in Chicago, Bozo Circus, and Bob Bell kind of said the same thing, where it's like, we don't do ABCs or number charts or anything like that. We just go and, and let her rip, you know? And Excellent. If it doesn't work uh, this time, we'll try it again tomorrow. <laughs> what are the most um, comforting uh, forms of support and encouragement that you've received since starting the show? And some of them have come from some big names. Yes. Um, well, obviously, uh, family is a big support and a huge amount of inspiration for Chuck E. Chicken. Um, uh, a lot of the characters are named after many of my family members, like Tommy Turkey and Louie Lou and uh, Johnny Jack Rabbit, uh, just to name a few. Um, but uh, also uh, the support of a lot of big names in, in Hollywood and people that I never thought that I would ever have the, 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 the honor to not only talk to, but work with. For example, um, one guy, David Parixma, who is a, uh, a Disney feature animator that goes all the way back to the 80s with uh, films like The Black Cauldron, um, The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, like, you know, my childhood. Also, some other great folks like Tom Ruger, who is the producer of uh, and the creator of shows like Tiny Toon Adventures, Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain. Just last year, we started working on a whole new batch of Chucky cartoons, really putting a story uh, to it, not just the one-offs that we've been doing for a long time. And now we want to actually put them in some really fun scenarios on, on a movie studio set. And... Um, I spoke with Tom about it and I basically said, I'm having troubles trying to find a really good hook for it. Cause you know, there's so many great shows that take place on movie studios. How do you make it different? And uh, he, he asked me quite bluntly. He says, hey, have you ever heard of McHale's Navy? I, I had to admit that no, I did not know what McHale's- That Gomer Pyle's was. vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, then he said, well, what about Hogan's Heroes? I said, oh, I love Hogan's Heroes. That's, he says, if you take the, the wartime comedy of those shows and you mix it with 1930s Hollywood, you'll have a hit. And that's what we did. We took the, the elements of a couple of guys who have uh, bumbling you know, commanders and people who don't necessarily know what they're doing at the top. And uh, the, the lower guys are the ones really running the show which in, a, in its own irony is kind of what's going on today in the industry, but I'm just going to leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of film department are you running down there, Fox? Uh, well, you see, Mr. Turkey. This is the fifth rotten cartoon we've had this month. <laughs> it takes time to make great works of art, and time is money, as you very well know, sir. Looks like you're giving me great big piles of fertilizer. Well... We could always go back to the silent pictures and may even save us a dime or two. I'm about to turn you into a silent picture. Walk us through the creation of a typical episode. And why does your location there in the Quad Cities in Northwest Illinois 
uh, how does it facilitate making a successful Chuck E. Chicken show? You know, we deal with cows and chickens and pigs. So what better place than the Midwest? You know, we got yeah. plenty of them. Um, the, the typical production of a Chucky cartoon starts uh, the same way that it's been done for about 80 years now. We start with a really good story. Uh, we come up with uh, some really great characters that people can relate to. People so who's to writing the story? I don't want to interrupt. I mean, do you, do you wake up in, in the middle of the night and scratch something out on a notebook? And oh, you have a team of writers. Yeah, it's me and a, a small group of people. We come together. We have a writer's room. We do everything virtually. We come up with some fun ideas and then we just kind of add a there's a few things that we have to put in there that, uh, for example, we got to say what the characters look like, uh, the costumes, and for the animators to know um, exactly, because you got to be very specific in animated cartoons. After we do the script, we then do the voices. We have a really wonderful cast of people that, are, that consists of um, more contemporary celebrities from the realm of YouTube as well as some really high profile folks from the world of video games and animation. I, I help out, of course, with Chucky's voice and a few ancillary characters and things like that. But um, for me, it's really the performance because that's that's key. If the voice actor does not give a good performance, we as animators can't give a great performance on the screen. So then from there, we do the storyboards, which is essentially a comic book version of the cartoon, uh, frame by frame, kind of showing the action and little small beat, uh, you know, beats. Then we put that together into an animatic with the voices to get the timing of the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And from there, I mean, while all that's going on, we're doing the character designs, um, you know, model sheets, uh, background designs, color charts, figuring out the mood of the scene, uh, some, you know, preliminary music and sound is, you know, put into that as well. And then once all that is done and all that is greenlit and we get all that going, then we can start the animation process. And that is a lot of the brunt work, making sure that the motion is fluid, that the, that the poses read well, uh, that the acting is there and that it's top notch, that it's not too over the top, but it's not too subtle. It's, you know, sure. right on, you know, right, just right. And then after all that is done, we go and we do it again, only this time wow. we uh, ink all the lines and then we color everything in, we composite the backgrounds in. Yes, everything is done by hand. So mm -hmm. we, don't do, we don't do puppets, we don't do rigs, we don't do anything like that. We do it the old fashioned way, like Chuck Jones and um, you know Bob Clampett and Mark yeah. Davis and all the old guys. So we, what's the uh, most difficult thing about drawing Chucky e. Chicken himself? Uh, and, and what's the most enjoyable part of it? A, a lot of people get the beak wrong. A lot of people get the beak <laughs> wrong uh, or the comb. Uh, the comb is very deceptive. Um, but the way that I tell people is even hey, what's the comb? The comb is the big red thing. We're that, not all from Northwest <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I tell people if you could think of a large curvy L and you stick it right on his head, then you got Chucky's comb. And he's got um, a lot of friends too. He's got, I think there were some dogs caroling in the Christmas. Were those dogs the Christmas carols? Yes. Yeah, okay. the, uh, those were uh, just a, uh, the carolers, we call them. Um, but he's got um, some of the main people that you'll see constantly in the cartoons of Chelsea Chicken. Is that um, his girlfriend? I am uh, not a liberty to say he's okay. got a deep okay, crush okay. on her. He's got a crush on her, that's for sure. She's We've got paparazzi in Northwest <laughs> Illinois trying to, trying to snap a photo of what Chucky uh, and Chelsea well, are up to. Well, the story that we have now for the show is that they all work at the famous Tough Cluck Studios in Featherton, USA. And the studio's kind of fallen on hard times. It takes place in what we call the neo 1930s. So there's it's the 30s, but there's elements of today that help it make related to the kids. And Tommy Turkey is the head of the studio, uh, very much fashioned after um, Harry Cohen, who was the head of uh, Columbia Pictures back in the 30s. <laughs> So he's the big cigar chomping, very, you know, uh, brute, <laughs> blunt, you know, what's this, you know, get this crap out of here, you know. And yeah, all right. Played amazingly by Mike Pollock, by the way, who um, is the voice of Dr. Eggman in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Um, and so basically they're trying to save the studio and Chucky, who got hired on as the janitor, um, has always had dreams and ambitions of being a director. Like he knows the movie business inside and out. He's yeah. tried his best. And so finally he gets his chance and it's like, all right, we're going to give you a shot. Um, unfortunately, Freddie Fox, who is the current, you know, head producer of the studio really doesn't want to share any of the credit or any of the money 
with Chucky, so he does everything in his in his um, in his um, in, in, oh gosh, everything possible. Thank you. I stutter sometimes. <laughs> no, no, it's everything I'm possible fine. to ruin Chucky's chances from destroying the set. To Excellent. Give me a. I'll give you a sneak peek. Is you know, don't tell nobody. Right, right. When do you think it'll come out? <laughs> We're looking at a 2024 release for the pilot okay. for Films of a Feather. Chucky Chicken. Films of a Feather, because I love the music you're using. It, it definitely is uh, reminding me of old Bugs Money cartoons. You got a whole orchestra in there. Right now, we have a wonderful uh, songwriting team uh, who are writing original songs for the show. And our hope is uh, we do have a great guy who's doing the composing for the music for us. But our hope is to get the um, the Quad City Symphonic. You had told, was it Channel 4 WHBF? That yes. Chuck, you are basically, Chucky Chicken is you in chicken form. He is. So yeah. over the last 14 years. Since that sketch in a notebook, how have you and how have Chucky evolved? It's evolved in from me just doing the stuff by myself in a, you know, in a bedroom in Oswego, Illinois, to now me and a small team. I mean, it, it, it's 14 years. There's a lot that's happened. I mean, um, he, he, he himself has gone from being, quite frankly, uh, I, I hate to say it, but like sort of a, a Mickey Mouse knockoff, if you will, sure. to now he's his own character. He... He um, has his own personality. He's got his own wants, his own beliefs, his own dreams, uh, his goals and aspirations. Um, as he's got all of these amazing friends that help build him, or in some cases, like Freddy, you know, want to kill him. Um, but he, he's he's a very wonderful character, and uh, he's come to terms with a lot of stuff like I have in my life. But for for example, just for clarity's sake, when I was eighteen. Uh, I was diagnosed with what's now today known as ASD, well, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Back then, it was called Asperger's. It's not called that anymore. I don't know why. It's such a memorable name, you know. Um, and it was very tough for me to kind of come to terms with that over the years and, and kind of accept that part of me. Well, now um, I've accepted it so much that Chucky himself also has it and deals with it in the show not in a very uh, abrupt way. Like we don't just sure. go out and say that he has it, but we've managed to use classic animated tropes. For example, in the 1930s, they had a lot of inanimate objects that would come to life, like chairs yeah. or lamps or buckets or things like that. Well, the same thing happens in our cartoon. However, Chucky is the only one who can see and interact with them. And in a way that's kind of, uh, he sees the world you know, in a different way than everybody else. He sees it in a very, um, you know, very charming, very uh, optimistic. He's got a very wonderful viewpoint in life where anything can happen. Where around him, the world can be falling apart and things can be, you know, just very all doom and gloom. Chucky's got a very unique perspective on things, which I, I, share, <laughs> I share that with him. I'm very, we're both optimistic. We Excellent. both hope for the best. We we want things to be better, not just in our industry, but in the world in general. Um, we want to leave it a little better than when we got here. And, and that uh, that was a, a, a Tom suggestion as well. He said you should add more of you with that, uh, you know, with your ASD and put that into the character, and that'll just separate it even more. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is most exciting. Come on, Chucky. <laughs> The residents of this ghostly estate have been cooped up for centuries and have been dying for company. <laughs> Chucky, isn't this a place exciting? <laughs> Chucky! And, and Chucky's got the support of all his friends, and as you mentioned, he's always got his friends back. Uh, yes. Oh, here. absolutely. Absolutely, he will stick his neck out for anybody. Um, he's not uh, he's not above being a little bit of uh, I don't want to say manipulating, but uh, he he get, he gives it to the bad guys just as much as they gave it to him. And what right. I mean by that is, uh, Freddie Fox can be a bit of a jerk, and sometimes Chucky needs to put him in his place in his own way. He'll never hurt Freddie intentionally. He'll never. Uh, go out and you know sock him one in the face, but someone threw yeah. Freddie against a, a barn wall. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was him. Freddie did it to himself. Chucky just got out of the way. I mean, okay. he never will. He's like the Roadrunner. You know, one of the Chuck Jones rules was the Roadrunner never 
uh, personally hit or hurt the coyote. The coyote did it to himself. And he Interesting. Was, and he was okay. he was more humiliated than he was injured. You know, folks, Whiteside County is a great place to live, work, and play. And when it comes to finding a home, they definitely won't try and outfox you. Outfox? Why, you little guy? Oh, no need to take offense, Freddy. <laughs> Visit whiteside.org for more information. Ah, oh, I like Chucky even more now. Aw. Yeah. I like you too, Dan. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. All right, we're going to do a little well. fun. Our little fun exercise that I had emailed you about. So, you know, yes. cartoon characters based on real life individuals. And, you know, Fred Flintstone is uh, Ralph Cramden, basically. And Jackie. Whatnot. Okay, so I, I wanted to mention a few famous Illinoisans, and you would tell me what would be the cartoon animal version of these people. Just do that, or two or three of them. Okay. Um, Barack, if you were putting together President Barack, First Lady Michelle Obama, what are their cartoon versions? Oh, goodness. I would um, probably make them uh, falcons or like very majestic birds, uh, but um, not eagles because that's that's hitting it too close to home with the whole presidency thing. But I'd probably make them falcons, give them a very successful business in Featherton. You know, maybe people could urge him to run for president. He goes, oh, no, uh, I'm happy right here. Where I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy right here. All right. Let's do Miss Oprah Winfrey. Oh, Oprah, absolutely a wise owl. I mean, she's been through so much in her life, so many experiences, and she's helped so many people over the years. Okay, and, Jake and Elwood Blues. What are their cartoon animals? The Blues Brothers? Oh, they got to be penguins. Penguins. <laughs> penguins. Absolutely. They're, they're cool. They're smooth. They got okay. wicked dance moves. I mean, they got to be penguins. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we'll do one more, and, and hopefully you're familiar with this outfit, because I know they're from Northwest Illinois. Let's do the band Cheap Trick. Robin Zander obviously has to be a Robin, you know? Yeah. Robin. I mean, that's, <laughs> okay. he's, a, he's a bird. He's a songbird. Absolutely 100%. Um, I was looking at, at, at some older pictures of them from the 70s, um, and I learned in my research that yeah, they became super famous in Japan before they became super famous here in the States. So what I would probably do with them is I would keep them Midwestern animals, like maybe a rabbit uh, for the drummer or a raccoon or a beaver, and, you know, uh, along with the robin. The drummer is Bunny Carlos. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> so he'd be, he'd be a chubby bunny, Bunny Carlos. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, um, and we would probably have them in somewhat Japanese anime inspired clothing. All right, Bill Murray. I'm sorry. I don't want to keep doing this, but I want to know what Bill Murray would be. Oh, he'd be a goat. 100% a goat. He's the greatest of all time. He was not afraid of the curse of the goat. He's a big Cubs fan. Ah, good I, I, I got it. We got it. And plus, he is just a, you know, I, I would love to work with him. He's one of my top tier guys. I, I love Ghostbusters. And plus, with Dan Aykroyd, I mean, I would have at least little ghost insignias or something related to ghosts for both. Uh, his character and for the go for Billy. So, oh, excellent. The mind of an animator. This is unbelievable. Okay, just give me the animal. Michael Jordan, what's he going to be? Oh, he's got to be a bull. He's got to be a yeah. bull? Yeah, yeah, he's okay. Be, he's the most famous. You know, he's a Chicago bull. You know, he'd be a, a coach or he'd be, you know, a, a retired, uh, you know, player. You know, he'd be 100% a bull. A bull with a lot of endorsements. And then finally, Jennifer Hudson. I thought about this for a little bit. I'd probably make her a swan. Oh yeah, nice. A, uh, she's been through a really uh, great transformation. Lately. She looks gorgeous, by the way. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Uh, she's just a, a heck of a singer, and she's just a wonderful performer. So absolutely a, a beautiful swan. I think excellent. One hundred percent. Can't wait to see this lineup. Okay, then <laughs> tell us. Uh, I can, if you can get them, I will put them on. You I'll have to the I'll send out a group. <laughs> send out a group email. Your name came up during a Zoom interview. So what are we doing to expand the Chucky e. Chicken fan base? And what's next for the show? Obviously, you've got this big, you know, production coming up in 2024. But in, in, in the immediate future, where, where can fans go to see Chucky e. Chicken? We're doing the 31 Days of Halloween, where we have all the characters dressed up as their favorite, uh, you know, character from the 30s, as well as maybe one of their favorite uh, uh, Halloween icons. Um, we do that every year where we have them dressed up and we're doing little Halloween cards on social media. And then we have the, uh, the Chuck Vent calendar for Christmas. Oh, the Chuck Vent calendar. Yeah. Okay. So the 25 days before Christmas, we always have a little, uh, one of the characters give holiday greetings, celebrating, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, 
Kwanzaa, you know, Ramadan, Eid, um, Diwali, because uh, we do have a very diverse cast of characters on the show. It's, we, it's a, that's important to us. The other thing uh, that I wanted to mention was the fans. Um, Chucky, ironically enough, has struck a huge chord with the autism community. And uh, I got so. a lot of people uh, who, who do deal with autism that write to Chucky. I've gotten uh, so many pieces of fan mail and, and fan art. It's just, it, it blows my mind. Excellent. There was one. That's thing. Did you expect that? No, I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I didn't expect this much love from the autism community. I didn't expect sure. a lot of people to be like, "Wow." You know, I, I had one mom write me. She said, "For some reason, your your character is broken in my kid's world that I never even expected." I mean, I'm like up there with to them, like Thomas the Tank Engine or Veggie Tales or classic Mickey Mouse. I mean, because he's you know the classic version of Mickey is a very soft and a very round and a very inviting character design. And it's very welcoming and very easy for kids uh, to, uh, to, to latch on to. Same sure. thing with uh, VeggieTales, the original version of VeggieTales, the faces and the eyes were very, um, you know, welcoming. It was very easy for kids to, uh, to latch on to these characters. And with Chucky, that's kind of been the same thing, which to me, I had no idea of what even happened. And sure. it's, it's very, I, I'm, I take the audience very, very seriously. Um, I don't write down to anybody. I don't write up to anybody. I, I believe in, uh, you know, family entertainment. I don't do kiddie shows. I don't do adult shows. Right. Uh, keep it where anybody uh, today can watch it or in 20 years can watch it and still get the same amount of satisfaction, the same amount of love and fun as they did when they were watching them today. That's that's part of my goal. So I want to say thank you to all of the fans who have written me, who have uh, sent me fan mail, who have tagged me on you know social media with their fan art. Uh, I love you all. I'm very thankful. The whole team sees you. We love you. And please keep it coming. And please keep supporting the show. It means the world. So thank you. Excellent. And that's where we're going to conclude. That's Michael Cook, the creator of Chucky Chicken, live from Davenport, Illinois. Check it out. Twitter, Instagram, as well as YouTube, Chucky Chicken Cartoons. Thanks for checking in. This is Dan Patton with Screen Magazine. So long, folks. <laughs>